Hey, what's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick. That's Big Show. We here to give it to you. And today is another TCT show. How are you doing? I'm good, sir. I'm good, sir. How are you? Uh, I can't complain. Um, I mean, I could. Wouldn't do me any good. So I'm not. Uh, not as much heat these last couple days. Uh, no, it's been great. Got a little lightning storm yesterday, though. I had to cut my run short. Um, I was telling my wife, I could have kept going. I'm not wearing anything metal. And she's like, you were out on the road by yourself, wasn't you? Yeah. So you were the tallest thing on the road. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. So, right. Yeah. Hey, but you could have got superpowers. <laughs> or become a force ghost. I'm, there you go. Either one. Speaking of Force Ghosts, that's a great segue because I want to, you know, drop this first before we get to our True Crime Thursday stuff. Uh, because we weren't here last week, we need to talk about Episode 7 and Episode 8, the finale of The Acolyte, and share our thoughts and our feelings. Um, It's pretty short and simple for me. It's the same thing that's plagued this show for the first six weeks. Piss poor writing really is. It had potential to be a very good show. Eh, is all I can give it. Um, it should have been so much better. And I understand that the Obi-Wan show received a $90 million budget and this received a $180 million budget. How do you get twice the budget, uh, budget and look half as good? A, a lot of those places look like set pieces instead of actual locations. And when you have a budget like that, whether you whether it's lighting, location, filming, there's no excuse. You have the budget that most movies would dream for. And there's no excuse. You drop the ball. And I don't want to hear anybody say, oh, Star Wars is woke. Star Wars is... This. I'm not even talking about that. It comes down to piss poor writing. And I'm going to leave it there. Show. I mean, I agree with with the exception of the sets. I didn't really have a problem with with the background. You know, it didn't. It looked like every other Star Wars show that we've seen. To me, I wasn't picking that part. The storyline was super slow. Mm -hmm. um, it had it had some fun things. Had some fun parts to it. Um, but man. If I had to grade the overall show, we're looking probably a D, maybe a D plus. A D. Um, and, and, and you're talking about it's slow. That's that's the writer's fault. I mean, if you well, I think the actors sucked. I think the actors overall sucked. The guy that the played... actors are given poor lines, and the actors are not given anything motivating. It's kind of hard for them. A writer has to get you from point A I don't know. to point B. And I don't know. You put they didn't you put Den, you put Denzel in that lead Jedi role. I'm pretty sure he'd have rocked it no matter how they wrote it. I'm just there's a, a, an actor has ha, an actor has a gift. Um I and think you know the what? chick that played in, in the Matrix, she mm -hmm. did okay. I would have preferred her to be the lead Jedi versus the Asian dude. Because uh, he sucked. He sucked. I didn't think the he whole, was that bad. I think that I did, everything I think else he sucked. was bad. I uh, think he sucked. The The girl that played the twins. Oh, and, and this is not an acting thing. This is poor writing. The motivations. Hey, two episodes before this thing is over, we're going to switch sides. For reals, player. That's how we're going to write it. You know? So for the, they didn't really switch sides till episode eight, the very last episode. That that's even worse, you know. That's but that's Daenerys from Game of Thrones. Mm, no, because the way for me, this is just my humble opinion. For me, the waves that explained who what's I for, the guy's so forgettable. What's his name? The the Jedi dude that Saul. Uh, Saul. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, better call Saul. That's how I should remember it <laughs> because he needs a lawyer after that. But anyway, the way he explained that, you know, they're not sisters. They're actually one person. To me, I viewed it as, okay, you have a 
good side of the force and a bad side of the force that was created by the mothers. That little cameo of Darth Plagueis in the cave, I don't know where that hell came up came from. That was like totally off. They clearly to me that, that was re- yeah. To me that was uh, oh let's 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 try to suck some people in from the old school. Oh, but uh, worse deal. How about that Yoda headshot at the end? We're just gonna get the that, top of the top, and that was okay. In. That was he okay for me. Anything. That was okay for me. I mean, because I think the the green Jedi chick has a lot more story to tell. Um, depending obviously who's telling the story, but uh, I I didn't like the crouching tiger, hidden dragon, martial arts crap that happened in the last episode. I thought that was kind of. St- Stupid. Any other, any other Star Wars scene or show you ever seen? They they don't do hand to hand combat, and I don't know why it was a big deal in this in this ep- in this series. Um, I mean, you um, never even when even when Anakin and Obi Wan were fighting at the end of Revenge of the Sith, they weren't throwing punches and blocking punches. It was all lightsaber duel. Yeah. Um, and that's what that's what Jedi's and Sith should do. And the you talk about Jedi and, and Sith. The lines were really blurred in this show. The Jedi were doing things that were out of character for Jedi, especially the bald green chick. I could swear she was going to be a Sith. I mean, how much stuff do you want to hide? I mean, what motivations do you have? I mean, they didn't tell us anything about her former Padawan until the end that let us know that he was the former Padawan. Um, you hit it on the head when you said earlier, it's just lazy. Very slow and lazy. Yeah, I, I guess I'm not that that mu- that critical of that of that portion of it. I mean, I don't care about that. That. But if the writing, was I, I want to know where I want to know where faster, they're going, and they could have explained more. I want to know where they're going. Yeah, that that's that's I. For 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 Mar, I'll just use Marvel an example. They're going to give you a year by year timeline. This movie's coming out. This movie's coming out. This movie's coming out. This you can see the storyline verse through the movies and the titles that are coming out. To me, I I don't understand where where they're going with it. The the storyline in general, to me, I I just don't know what story. I, I don't understand the whole point of the girls. I don't understand the point of the bad guy, you know, Darth smiley face. I don't understand his whole portion of his, where he ranks, you know, what, what is his, what's his reasoning? You know, uh, what's his motivation? Um, You know, why does Darth Pelagus need to be involved in it at all, except to try to explain away the fact that, you know, he created Anakin. By yeah. watching the witches, I guess. I don't know. We don't even know if this is going to get a season two, and it left us with more questions than answers. I'm okay if they don't do a season two. I am too. They, I would like to see more Old Republic crap. You had mentioned something about the Jedi doing. I was okay with that. You know, the Jedi doing not what we're accustomed to, our main Jedi's doing, because I think that's what caused the downfall with Palpatine is because there was a dissension in the ranks of Jedi. So they had to show that. They could have done it. They could have done that 50 times better, obviously. Yeah. But I wasn't I wasn't upset with the fact that that's what they did. True. All right. Let us know, guys, what do you think about the Acolyte? Have you seen it? Have you not? Do you have any plans on seeing it? If you have seen it, Let us know what you think about it as a series as a whole. Do you agree with us? Do you think it was hot garbage? Do you think it needed work? Do you think it was the best thing since sliced bread? Let us know your opinion. Hit us up. The Slightly Warped Podcast at Yahoo.com. And one more thing, too, also. Mm -hmm. And so canon is the old old storyline, right? When they say it's canon. If or it's canon, it, it is it is it is included in the entire Star Wars. In anything that's canon happened. 
And they say All the right. things that were written before that they do not show and they don't consider canon, they call that legends. Okay. So in I don't ever recall reading this and, and you may have or seen it, but from what I understood, the kyber crystals they were chosen by the Jedi and they mm -hmm. were different colors for different things. Yes. I never seen them change color. Like in, even in uh, when Darth Maul in the book, he actually went to a Sith planet to get a red kyber crystal for his uh, deal. Now I do so know this... for a fact that I have read that you can bleed a crystal. If it's not, but is that one legend or is that canon? Apparently they just made it canon because they put it in this, but, uh, no, I get that. But like, was it ever in the old stuff is what I'm getting at. I, I, I don't ever recall stuff. Yeah. But there hmm. in, 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 in previous canon, the way Lucas had it set up, you had a process that you had to go through in order to get your kyber crystal to bleed. You couldn't just like pick up somebody's lightsaber, turn it red and, you know, keep going. It, it was a long drawn out process, part of the Sith trials. So, gotcha. uh, because I know even in the Darth Bane stuff, they 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 got red kyber crystals. They didn't have to get a red a blue one and bleed it to red. I mean, it just or not that and, I and usually bleeding a crystal is somebody else's crystal. If you if you're fortunate enough to get one that's red, you you wouldn't have to worry about it. Um, interesting. Yeah, I, I did not like that uh, because if that's the case, why didn't Anakin's saber turn red when he fought Obi-Wan? And he had just slaughtered kids and dignitaries and everybody. I mean, you know. True. So it wasn't like he was just mad. He took out his frustrations. So, True. Um. Yeah, I just don't like that they went there. That's a lot of truth in that one. I didn't think about that, but yep. Star Wars, you got to do better, man. Got to do better. Please do better. All right. All y'all that are sitting there like, hey, I thought this was a true crime Thursday. Yes, it is. Well, Star and, Wars uh, did commit a, a, an atrocity crime on us. Yeah, fans, yeah. Okay. So look at that. You got two episodes for the price of one. We've been hurt right. by Star Wars, ripped off. And uh, now we're talking about the kingpin of kingpins, a one Pablo Escobar. Uh, show, how much do you know about Pablo? Um, I know a little. I know a little. Let me let me just go through some things here. Um, all right, he was born December first of nineteen forty nine, and um, he is from. And I hope I don't butcher this uh, city. Rihanna, Rihanna, no, um, Rihanna Grow, Colombia, and he died December 2nd of 1993. So he was 44 years old, and uh, he was in Medellin, Colombia. And that name, Medellin, that's going to come in handy later on as we uh talk. He died to a gunshot wound to the head, by the way. So, uh, spoilers, um. I he think it's Medellin married. or something like that. Medellin? Yeah, okay. I got you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's where the drug pin, uh, uh, oh, the Medellin cartel. That's yes. that's where they used to do the yeah. uh, the weed, the marijuana, yeah. that the ATF burned down all their marijuana fields. Now, 1976, I believe it was 76, he married Maria Victoria Hiano, and they had two children, Sebastian and Manuela. I don't know where the kids are right now or um, if they are still around. Uh, I bet you that's not their names anymore. Oh, I bet it isn't too. I agree with you. Now, you know how boxers give themselves nicknames or somebody's real bad. They want to give themselves a nickname. This man gave himself not one, not two, not three, not four, but five nicknames. He's called El Patreon. Oh, excuse me, El Patron. El Patron. I got to get this pronunciation right. El Patron, which means the boss. I should have known that because Patron is a drink. Uh, Don Pablo, which just means Sir Pablo. Uh, El Padrino, which means the godfather. So you know what his mindset is. El Diablo. And if y'all don't know, that means the devil. And uh, 
Pacia, Robin Hood. Uh, so the Robin Hood part will come into play here in a second, too. Uh, and he was all five of those. Yes. Yes, Let's he be was. Honest, he was all five of those. He was part of the illegal drug trade, assassinations, bombing, bribery, racketeering, and murder. And his criminal penalty for all this? Five years in prison. Yeah. Pablo in a Pablo. prison. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We can't blow plus in a prison that he built. Oh, I was I was getting there. I, I was going there. <laughs> I was going there because that blew my mind. Um yes. okay, so you're going to prison, but you still have the freedom to come and go as you please. Now now you mentioned the Medellin uh cartel. He was mm -hmm. the sole leader of it, and he dubbed himself the king of cocaine. Um now, Escobar, see, I don't I, he took over that. He wasn't he wasn't the leader. Oh, okay, because what I'm reading here says he was the founder and sole leader. So unless they called it something else, because the Medellin cartel for a long time didn't deal with cocaine. They refused to because that was directly on the police's radar. They they dealt strictly in 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 marijuana. Mm. Okay. Now from what I do know, he was one of the most wealthiest criminals in history. Yes. Histories. That that means he had money, y'all. Um, looks like uh they amassed an estimated net worth of thirty US billion dollars by the time of his death, which to this day is equivalent to uh, over seventy billion with a B dollars. And that was as of 2022. So, you know, with inflation, that's just skyrocketed. Um, now, while his drug cartel monopolized the cocaine trade in the United States and uh, in the early uh, 80s, all the way through the early 90s, he, he, he had done sev several more things. Um, now, let me see. For those of us who are on, um, who are on YouTube, you, you're able to watch with us. So uh, this is a shot of uh, El Diablo himself here. Bro looks like he's happy to be there. He absolutely had no fear, which plays into what you were talking about earlier. Hey, you know, going to prison? Nah, I'll just make my own. Um, he had no fear. He actually had a lot of the law in his pockets. So he knew that he could. When somebody doesn't, if, if they're not afraid of any of the consequences, they are going to do anything they want to do. And that's where we were with him. He pretty much did whatever he wanted to. Yes. By the 1980s, it says estimated Escobar led monthly shipments of 70 to 80 tons of cocaine into the country. That'd be our country here from Colombia. As he, as a result, he quickly became one of the richest people in the world. Yeah, we, we talked about that. Can you imagine that? Every month, 70 to 80 tons. Think about this. The average car is about two tons. So if you could put 40 cars on a boat, that's how much cocaine every month this man was sending over. Vail, Colorado, yes. got that much snow. No, no. He was supplying it right through uh, Miami area. Coming to up through Florida, and, and we little, do know that uh, from Florida to Cuba, that Cuba Miami connection was just straight crazy in the eighties, as far as you know the drug trade. So uh, they would it, fly by, they would fly overhead, drop them in the water, a boat would come pick them up out of the water, and there you go. Check it out. This is how much power this man had in nineteen eighty two. Colombian parliamentary election um, in, in the election, Escobar was elected as an alternate member of the Chamber of Representatives as part of the Liberal Party. Not only at this point does he have the law in his hands, he is the law. What's going on here? 
Um, now, through this, he was responsible for community projects. Uh, such as construction of houses, football fields, which gained him uh, popularity among the locals. So this man is backdooring it like crazy. He's like, okay, I'm not going to be the evil drug kingpin that everybody thinks. I'm giving back to the community. I'm making people love me. He had the system working in his favor from every angle. Yes, he did. And that's where that Robin Hood thing comes in. Well, and, and, you know, the people, uh, when he was doing his thing, when he first started, he was uh, giving back to the to the poor folks. And that's who kept him safe from the law in that little village that he mm-hmm. lived around. They would give him a heads up before they could raid his complex and he wouldn't be there because he gave back to them. He was he was very, 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 very smart. Yes, he was for for a while, for a while. I mean, we mentioned the the drug trade, and let me see if I can pull this one up because this oh, I need a bigger shot so that you can see this. This this was crazy too. I don't know. can I? Exp- yeah, I can make that bigger. All right. So this map that you're about to see represents the drug trade. Look at this. Now the green is cocaine. The uh, orange is opiates. Look at all them lines. He had stuff moving everywhere. So he wasn't just about getting it up the Miami coastline into the United States. He was sending was stuff everywhere. everywhere. Yep. Um, and, and then from some of those places, then they would go to the U.S., Therefore, going an alternate direction, entering another city in the United States instead of just going through, you know, Miami. He he was covering his bases. Oh, man. And so stuff would come from South America into all kind of ports and some stuff would stay there or it would go out to another city. I mean... I understand this man was a criminal, but let's face it. He was also mastermind. You hate to say that about people, but he he was. I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And I, I mean, I don't know how much you know about the Mexican cartels in general, but they're... They're pretty ruthless. Yeah. And yeah. and I wouldn't cross him. He he is very was very ruthless in his reign. Um I know just a personal story. Um I used I used to uh, dispatch uh drivers out of Laredo, Texas, which is right across the border from Mexico. It's I mean that's where we can transfer goods in and out of Mexico from that port. And Mm -hmm. the little town that's right across the river is called Nueve Laredo. That's the Mexican side. Mm. But when I was down there, I would fly down there once a year just to, you know, face to, to my drivers and boots to concrete with customers and things like that. But um, there was one of the times I was down there, there was, there was a, there's another or was another young uh, Mexican gang. I want to call it they're like M19 something that starts. It's a number and a letter. I don't remember what it mm-hmm. was. But anywho, they were ex cartel members that were running this gang. For whatever reason, they got outs with the cartel. So they were fighting over because uh, I 35 runs right into Laredo. And you can run that right into Nueva Laredo, I-35, south and north. Um, so that's the main corridor for the drugs when they take them out of there. But anywho, the, uh, the president of that area was having a problem with this young gang. And uh, it was starting to bleed into the cartel side of their business. And the head of the cartel went to the president and said, hey, 
you know, you kind of need to check these guys. And the person's like, there's nothing I can do. They outman us, they're ruthless. And uh, the head of the cartel said, if you don't do something, I will. And, he go, and the president basically said, there's nothing that I can do. Uh, and it was like in less than a week on the president's lawn were like 30 heads from <laughs> just severed heads yeah. from this young group of leaders of this gang. So, I mean, and I was down there at the time when they found the heads. So, yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty freaky. Like I'd have my buddies like, let's go across the border for to party. I'm like, nah, I'm good. Thanks, bro. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. I, shoot. Now, as far as Escobar's legacy, uh, it does remain controversial. Um, it, it looks like in 91 was the year that he surrendered himself finally to authorities. He was sentenced to those five years in prison. <laughs> I still don't understand why that was so low, but again, people in your pocket. Uh, but he struck a deal for uh, a deal of no extradition with the Colombian president, who at the time was Cesar Gavira, and with the ability of being housed in his own self-built prison. We mentioned that. Um, and in 1992, Escobar escaped and went into hiding when authorities attempted to move him to a more standard holding facility, leading to a nationwide manhunt. And as a result of that manhunt, um, the Medellin cartel crumbled. And in 93, Escobar was tracked down and he was killed in his hometown uh, by Colombian National Police. And it was just a day after his 44th birthday. And the reason why I brought that up, I never knew that part either. And I stumbled on a picture that I could swear I've seen before, but didn't really notice it. It's like one of those things. And it was like, holy shit, that is a body in that picture. That is Pablo Escobar, a bullet to the head. And that is the, um, the Colombian, uh, military. Um, those are the members and the, and the narco unit. And yeah. the narco unit, yep. And they're, I, they're, they're happy. Yeah, I don't know who was the responsible party for pulling the trigger, but they got him. You're right, they are happy about it. They are posing. I mean, the only time I see pictures like this, and y'all know who you are on Facebook, somebody that took down a deer or a wild animal, like you've been on a jungle safari, that's the standard pose. Stand over the body, pose and smile they did this for a man damn that's too yeah, tough for me it's kind of like what we did in the first part of 2000s when uh after 9 11 mm -hmm. and and the way that the uh, uh osama bin laden's people al-qaeda how they would take pictures with the people that they killed yes. same principle yeah that's ruthless right there too oh yeah and it's like damn but, those i are mean good guys Right, but I mean, how how it, well exactly allegedly <laughs> how much how much money was in their pocket from him? But um, I mean, but that's reason. I mean, his ruthlessness and the way he treated the people that worked for him. Um, that's why they turned against him and why he was able to get, you know, killed. Yeah. Um, now, wow. if you know, if you understand Spanish, okay, this this show is. A lot easier to watch, but it is in subtitles and it is a very good series. It's three seasons long and it's about his life. It's on Netflix. It's called Narcos, N A R C O S. And there's some spin offs. Is Narcos um, in Spanish? Oh, yeah. They okay, talk I in Spanish. I, I, I had heard of Narcos, but there I are never... some, there are some english parts where you know they're not but any mexican speaking person that's in the show like the guy that plays pablo escobar he never speaks spain or never speaks english oh okay it's all in spanish and so it's it's but you get to see him from how he's coming up how he runs it how he takes over blah 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 hmm. and to the very end and it's it's decent and there are a lot of cool spinoffs because who's the other el chapo yes uh he's the other one uh he actually I want to say, because there's three big ones. So there was a Kiki Cabrera or whatever, who was an undercover uh, DEA agent that was mm -hmm. murdered by 
the cartel. So there's a narco series about that. And the dude that plays Pablo Escobar in the Escobar series makes a few cameos in that season because they're all tied in the same time frame. But there's a gentleman that plays El Chapo uh, and you see him come up through and it talks about and he has his own series. So the, the narco series are pretty good. I'm, I'm going to um, check them out. It again. takes some time to you have to read, watch it, but it's not bad. Plug plug the streaming channel on that again. It's on Netflix. Netflix, okay. Um, I don't know if this is related at all, but when you start mentioning El Chapo and some others that are related, I start thinking about Griselda. I I, I forgot her last name. Um, mm -hmm. I, are you are you familiar with her? Um, she was like the queen of coke, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I don't recall her being in any of those series but i mean they're all tied together like the way he took over the meddling cartel and the guy that was in charge of the meddling cartel before he was and how they how they and why they turned over from marijuana to cocaine and all of that it's a pretty decent little story and how much and how much narcos the actual uh, American police department was trying to get to him and how they kept getting blocked by the Mexican police department. It was pretty, it's pretty interesting mm -hmm. history wise. So I definitely recommend it. Now it's not an easy watch because like I said, you read watching, but um, it is definitely a very good, very well written. Hello, Star Wars. Very well written show. You heard it here first from Big Show because, you know, two criminals, Kathleen Kennedy and El Chapo, or excuse me, uh, Escobar. But Him too. <laughs> we'll, do es we'll do El Chapo one day. But yeah, Escobar and Kathleen Kennedy, they, they two criminals. Yes. We are going to get flooded with emails from people that want to defend Kathleen Kennedy. I, I look forward to reading those. I hope they do. Um. You know, it's kind of like that dumb debate we had about who's better, Bo Jackson or or Deion Sanders. That was you know dumb. I mean? Only way, crackheads going to choose Deion. In case you guys are uh, wondering, when was that? I missed that show. That wasn't an episode. That was a group chat with one of our buddies, our wayward friend, um, who's and we, on we I And I ask everybody to pray for him because he is going through his crack addiction. We need to get him off of that. Uh, I did give him the 800 number. He knows who he is. I'm not going to say his name because I don't want to put him on front street like that. But, you know, just so uh, he is a crackhead because he thinks Deion Sanders is better than Bo Jackson. Yeah. Well, yeah. Bo, Bo was the better athlete, hands down. Deion yes. even said that. So if yeah. it comes from the source, there's no argument anymore. Not according to this cat. And <clears> I know I'm just going to, you know, cut a little clip of this part of the episode and put that out there on any given Sunday, the face group. But yeah, you might as face might as well. Might as well, but let us pray for you, this young man. <laughs> All right, show you got anything before we get out of here today? Uh, nothing, uh, nothing new. I mean, I'm down 64 pounds total. Damn, look at you go, man. I thought my little yes. tube was something, you know. I'm, yeah, I'm struggling so that, but that's you. that's total, that's total from when I began. So I have another 60 ish to go. Keep so, up the good work, though. I see I'm you trying, there, man. I see you doing it, and that that that's cool. Um, I, I I appreciate seeing somebody put in the work and get the results. And, and you know, you're not bitching and complaining about it. You're just doing what you got to do, and you're making it happen. I, I need yep. to see more of that from people. Yes, 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 yes. But uh, no, I appreciate everybody for tuning in again. Uh, we missed you guys last week. Life happened. Um, but yeah, thanks right. for watching. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell. So, you know, when uh, my man puts us on there and, uh, love your peoples. Tomorrow is not promised. We never know when our final day is going to be. So live today like Amen. it's your last. Amen. Y'all take care and we will see you next week. Music